What's up, guys? Um, consider this the first um, update or video in the build series for Mary Jane, <clears throat> the engine swap project I've got going on. Um, decided to make this and just show you guys what's been happening, some of the problems we've been going through, what the future of this project is going to be, and yes, it will be done. So before you exit out of the video now, it will be done. But I want to give you guys the first update first. So let me pause this and I'll flip the camera. All right, let me try this again. I'll tell you right now, every time I've tried this, my phone has overheated because it is so hot out here. But this is going to be the first little update. I think I already said that in this build series. Ah, I keep dropping my phone case. And I uh, just want to give you guys a little bit of an update about what's been going on with Mary Jane, um, some of the problems we've been coming into, and what we've overcome to get around this. So the first thing is we thought that this engine was going to be incredibly too large to fit in this bike. When uh, actually it fit in really well. As you can see right here, we had to notch out that part of the top of the frame. Right here in this neck, the support, which with this plate welded back in is still incredibly strong. I'm sorry if I'm a little shaky, this heat is a lot. Um, that we had to cut off the down pipe here in the front which uh, we did something a little trick with that because if anybody knows getting a bike out of the engine is the hardest part about working on an engine. So what we did was we pie cut this here, oh, pie cut, uh, just cut it at an angle, welded it on, tacked it for the moment. We are going to have a professional welder come through and weld all of this just because I'm riding it. I want it to be strong. What we did is up to about just past the midway point here on this pipe, that we cut, we put two pieces of one inch square stock in there that fit perfectly, cut them at the same angle and welded them onto this pipe itself, as you can tell from the discoloration. And then what we did is here on the bottom, because we want this to be as easy to get off as possible. With those two pieces of square stock, we drilled holes in it to match these and bolted through them. So this part of the pipe all the way down, the motor mounts can come off either the engine or there come all the way down and back up a little bit of a belly pan, protect the bottom of the engine with bolts in here, which yes, they are easy to get to. Um, they don't look like it, but they are here on each side. This one's a little bit easier to see, hopefully. And um, yeah, so that entire belly pan is gonna come off so the engine can come out. But what we discovered is after putting it in, you don't even need to remove it. It just makes it that much easier. Um, but we came through, made motor mounts for it. These are going to be getting rebuilt out of that metal we have right there because it's a lot thicker. These are just pretty much to mock it up and to hold the engine while we built the rest of it. Um, when it's welded, we're going to come back through, grind these down so they're nice and smooth. Um, it, any of you guys that have ever pulled an engine out of a WR knows that the engine actually mounts to the rear swing arm. Let's see if I can show you right here. So what we did is we got, and you're gonna laugh, a piece of conduit that fits on it just right to keep the inner wraith on those bearings from sliding in and out, which it works really well. Um, but that's pretty much all we had to do was notch the top part of the frame, cut out the down pipe, and then rebuild the bottom of it. So we built it a little low, but I'd much rather it be a little low because what I'm planning on doing here on the bottom is I'm gonna put some perforated steel here on the front as a rock guard like what a lot of WRs already have on them. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these yet. I know I do wanna mount something here. I wanna to try to keep this bike lean as stock as possible. But here on the bottom, I, because the whole bottom of this pan is finned for heat dissipation. So what I'm gonna do, oil drain plug, I'm gonna take some aluminum to bolt on down here and make kind of like an air dam. That would go on either side of it. It looks like the engine's off center, but it's not. That's literally just that oil cooler is not centered properly on the rest of the engine. The engine's centered perfectly in the bike, which um, in one of my past updates, I said I'm looking for somebody that can make a custom sprocket for me. And I don't know if you can see this. Eh, probably not, but that sprocket lines up perfectly with this rear one. So what we're gonna do, instead of getting a front sprocket custom made i'm going to find somebody that could do a custom rear sprocket in that change size because this is 520 that's 530 and um i'm going to make it a little wider and drop it a few teeth because i want to try to keep this gear ratio as close as it was on the original cb450 nighthawk because i want it to ride really well 
I want it to have a little bit more torque than what the original bike had. I want it to feel more like a dirt bike when you give it gas. Um, I was going to go away from the dual carburetor setup and go to a single carb and use the original carb that came on the WR450. But, um, yeah, that's not really going to be necessary. I mean, we'll have to come up with some idea for the air filters here. I've seen a few on the market that will work, but that's all down the line. But, okay, so all this wiring that's on it is going to have to be completely stripped off. I want to keep as much of the stock harness that came with the WR and build it in because it has a lot of the plugs. So I can plug everything into it. This is back again. My phone keeps overheating in this temperature. So I've been putting in the refrigerator inside to cool it down quickly. What I was saying is this is just something I cobbled up. So the on off switch here still works with the ignition. This is going to be getting replaced because this is way too easy to steal. If that all you have to do is jump those and you're off going. Um, but yeah, this is all going to be redone, all new electrical off of another WR, or not WR, CB450 that we found at Bob's. Yeah, Bob's uh, Motorcycle Scrapyard. Oh, I want to sit down. Bob's Motorcycle Scrapyard has one that's running and is in their, um, uh, what's it called there, their little bikes that run area, <laughs> the ones that aren't complete garbage. But the wiring harness on it looks brand new. The CDI on it looks brand new. The coil on it all looks brand new. So what we're going to be doing, because there is some things on it we don't like, is we're going to be buying the bike. Now the bike is $380, $380 after tax. I have hiccups now. Um, yeah, $380 after tax where the wiring harness, coil, and CDI were going to cost half of that. Actually, more than half because the uh, original price was 400 and all of that would have been closer to like 210 But anyways, yeah, we're going to be buying that, stripping all of that off of it because it is an older bike. The engine's still brand new in it and everything else. So what I'm going to be doing after that is selling it and the other chassis we have that this engine came from. Um, once that is done, those are going to be getting sold the wheels on those bikes sell for $200 a pop on eBay. So uh, hopefully if I part out the bike, the engine alone is going to pay for what I already put into it. Um, so the guy that's going to weld this, he's going to uh, charge me 75 bucks an hour, which is a lot better than most welders because they charge $100 a weld. Um, we were looking at it. This entire thing shouldn't cost us all too much. I might be into it $200 to have the entire thing welded. Um, but after that, uh, once it's welded, we're going to bring it back. We're going to reassemble it. I'm thinking about doing a time lapse on that and, uh, you know, just throw that up real quick with the first ride video. Because after it's welded, I'm going to take it on its first ride. There's some things we need to work, uh, work out, like uh, the brake lever here on the back once it's on. I have a bolt in it right now, that's why it looks so weird, is not going to work all too well with this here on the side. I might have to bend it down a little bit, which is fine. I don't mind. Um, I like my uh, uh, controls to be a little bit further under my foot anyways than flat. It's just how I ride. I ride toe down. Um, the shifter on the other side, we were thinking that we might have to buy a set of rear sets for this off of some cheap bike that way we could use all those linkages and uh, still maintain the shifter but I don't have to cut down the shifter all too much so we're just gonna do that cut down the shifter which is gonna be fine and uh, the first ride will be immediately after that this original carburetor is a push-pull setup so the original WR throttle tube is gonna work great with that the clutch uh, which I haven't ran the cable over for yet. Somebody pulled my clutch lever out. Should, if I'm right, come all the way around. And yeah, the clutch lever is going to be more than long enough for this. I'm thinking I might just bolt this to the case right here instead of using this original mounting point. 
I'm going to try to keep as much original hardware as possible between both bikes. I might use this to stabilize this bracket, but bolt it here, grind that down, bolt it here so it goes to this. That should be more than enough for that. If I have to, I'll set screw that or roll pin it so the cable doesn't come out easily. Um, it's something I have to look at. I didn't notice this while riding the bike because if you look, that front tire looks almost pretty good squared up. Anybody else out there with WRs, uh, let me know if your front wheel isn't perfectly centered between your forks because the way I got it, this is how it's always sat. Um, the spacers are on the right side. I, I don't know what's up with it, why it's not sitting right, but it's not. <laughs> the rear wheel sits perfectly centered with the rear, which is great. It doesn't look like it in the video, but it is. It's centered. But I uh, have to cut down some things, like engine bolts uh, or um, mounting bolts. But she's almost done, guys. She's almost completely done. Uh, the whole point of this is to try to keep the bike looking as stock as possible. I want it to look like something that if Yamaha or Honda would have made it, this is what it would have looked like. Um, I'm going to try to keep it as dirt bike as possible as far as the plastics that are on it. Might have to make something. Um, the paint job... Phone overheated again. Um, but what I was saying is paint job, I'm going to try keeping as stock as possible. I want to see if the guys that are going to powder coat it for me are going to be able to do Yamaha Blue that's on it. But I was going to do Yamaha Blue with a little bit of black metal flake in it. But I was thinking, this is a Yamaha Honda. Yamaha and Honda. It's going to be a Yamaha Honda. So what would you guys think Yamaha Blue with a red metal flake in it, you know, red for Honda, would look like in this? I think that would be pretty nice. I know why my phone's overheating. I'm recording in 4K. <laughs> but yeah. Let me know what you guys would think of that or if I should stick with Yamaha Blue with black metal flake in it, seeing as that's going to be the color scheme of the rest of the bike, is going to be Yamaha Blue and black. <clears throat> I'm not too sure yet. Um, most, <laughs> I know most people are going to be wondering, why the hell did he not cut that off? Well, we left that on there for straight. And uh, once that plate that's on the bottom of it is welded in, Completely. It is going to make that incredibly strong that we're going to be bolting the, Well, that's not the subframe the belly and the down tube to And then it's going to be just as strong that and I want some assurance in case a motor mount breaks or something goes wrong This engine is not going to fall out of this bike entirely uh, One way or another it's going to be held in side to side if it breaks and the back falls down, it's not going to fall and hit the ground. If the front breaks and falls down, it's going to go right into that um, down tube and the exhaust are going to hold it side from side to side, so it's not going to fall either. But uh, yeah, this is just a, a, a quick little update uh, what's going on with uh, Mary Jane 2.0 with Yamaha Honda. Um, I should say that this is an 05 WR450 named Mary Jane. I blew her heart up coming back from Roosevelt Lake in Globe, Arizona at 70 miles an hour, locked up the rear wheel on me and I didn't crash. That's right. Like everybody else, I know to grab the clutch. Um, but the engine is out of a 1985 Honda CB450 Nighthawk. Um, the engine's fresh. I mean, this engine is really nice. Uh, very little carbon buildup on the inside of the, or on the head and on the pistons. Um, fresh oil is in it. The guy that we got it from just completely rebuilt it, was getting ready to put it in his own project. Goddamn Harley riders. <laughs> Don't make me jump on the Indian and show you guys what's what. Um, but yeah, the exhaust is going to be pretty cool. I'm thinking either I'm going to keep them where they are and bring them back and have them dump into two SC Concept uh, um, uh, mufflers right here on each side. Or my original plan was to have it come down, follow this up to the, uh, to the uh, midframe, follow it back so on one side it's going to exit exactly like it would 
on the stock bike, but on the other side, it's going to be like mirrored. And uh, same thing, SC Concepts or a cheap eBay special uh, Akrapovic uh, ripoff <laughs> muffler. I, I want to go cheap on stuff like that. This engine, it, just look it up on YouTube. Sounds amazing. If you could hear one in real life, they are really, really great sounding engines. So I think with a muffler like that, it'll add a little bit of a throatiness to it. And make it sound really nice but yeah that's it as far as what's going on with mary jane hopefully here in the next week or so we're going to pick up the new cb450 and start stripping the wiring harness off of it to put on this and if any of you guys want anything off that except for electrical uh, message me on either instagram or put a comment on my videos and i will get back to you with it i, I kind of want to sell it here in arizona Unless you guys would want to pay for shipping to have parts sent out of state. Um, I think shipping outside of the U.S. is going to be a lot harder than that. But uh, it did it again on me. Had to go throw it back in the freezer. Um, but yeah, before it does it again, let me wrap this up. Um, this is where Mary Jane is at right now. Um, she's not too far off. Honestly, all the work that we've done on it could have been done in a weekend. Uh, that's how easy this is to do. Um, and we've never done an engine swap on a bike before, only cars. But uh, yeah, this is where she's at. And she's almost done. So <laughs> let me see here. So before my phone freezes again, let me say um, she's almost done. I'm so happy. I am actually very ecstatic. I've been waiting for this since the day I blew up the engine. Um, but yeah. Other than that, guys, there's Mary Jane. So uh, remember to spread that hippie love. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.